The single table strategy is the third inheritance strategy I want to show you. It takes a different approach compared to the previously explained strategies to gain better performance. But as always, you don't get the benefits for free. As you might have guessed from its name, the single table strategy maps all entities of the inheritance structure to the same database table. It allows you to share attributes and their mapping definitions and also to define polymorphic queries and relationships. In contrast to the previously discussed table per class strategy, the single table approach can do this with simple and fast SQL statements. That makes it the fastest inheritance strategy available. But it also has a huge drawback. Each entity maps only a subset of the database columns and sets the rest of them to null. That makes it impossible to define not null constraints on any database columns that are not mapped by all entities in the hierarchy. It prevents you from ensuring data consistency on a database level, and you need to carefully decide if you want to take this risk. The mapping definition of the single table strategy requires more annotations than for the other ones. As you can see in the first code snippet, the publication class gets annotated with entity and inheritance. Inheritance defines the inheritance strategy and sets it to inheritance type single table. You can also provide a discriminator column annotation. When you persist multiple entities in the same database table, you need to store additional information to distinguish the different entity classes. That is done with the discriminator column that contains a different value for each entity class. The discriminator column annotation allows you to define the name of this column. If you don't provide it, all JPA implementations will use the default name dtype. If you want to comply with the JPA standard, you also need to add a discriminator value annotation to each subclass. It defines the discriminator value for this specific entity and is optional when you use Hibernate. If you don't provide it, Hibernate will use the simple entity name by default, but you might not be able to switch to a different JPA implementation without adapting your code. You can find the examples of this video in the Inheritance Single Table project. As in the previous videos, let's first have a look at the mapping annotations. Here you can see the publication class. You know the annotations from the previous slide. The inheritance annotation sets the inheritance type to single table and I tell Hibernate to use the column publication type as the discriminator column. The book and blog post classes can now define their discriminator value or rely on Hibernate's default and use the simple entity name. As you can see here, I prefer to set the discriminator value for each entity and not to rely on proprietary Hibernate features. Ok, let's have a look at some examples and see what kind of SQL queries Hibernate generates with this inheritance strategy. I select all book entities in the test load book entities method in the test single table class. That is a simple query in JPQL and it should be the same in SQL because all entity attributes are mapped to columns in the same table. As expected, Hibernate selects all columns mapped by the book entity and uses the discriminator column to select only the records of book entities. Polymorphic queries became quite complex with the inheritance strategies I showed you in the previous videos. That shouldn't be the case with the single table strategy. I prepared such a query in the test load publication entities method. You already know it from the previous examples. It selects all publication entities from the database and Hibernate automatically maps them to the correct subclass. You can see the query here. It's as simple as you hopefully expected it to be. All subclasses are mapped to the same database table and Hibernate just needs to select all columns and map each record to an entity. It's the same when Hibernate retrieves a relationship to the publication entity from the database. 
I prepared an example for that in the test author with publications method. You can see here that I just select the author with ID 1 from the database and then call the get publications method to get all related publication entities. Hibernate will get the related records from the publication table and cast them to the correct subclass of the publication. As expected, Hibernate just needs to execute this simple query to get all publications that were written by the author. The two main advantages of the single table strategy are simplicity and efficiency. This strategy provides the best performance, especially for polymorphic queries and relationships. But you don't get the performance advantages for free. Storing all entities in the same database table prevents you from using not null constraints on columns that are not mapped by all entities. You need to decide for your application and table model if this increases the risk of data inconsistency and if you want to take it to get better performance. 